We shall be seated and receive the word of God. I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. verse 28 onwards. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today we meditate on the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is understanding. Now yesterday we spoke about the gift of wisdom and today is understanding. And wisdom and understanding are related to one another. They are closely related. If you remember the prayer we prayed yesterday in the book of wisdom chapter 7 verse 7 it said I prayed to the Lord and wisdom was given to me and understanding came to me so these are closely associated with one another now today we start with Proverbs chapter 2 verse 2 onwards Proverbs chapter 2 verse Two onwards. Shall we read that? Making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes. Bible says incline your heart to wisdom and understanding. Read on please. If you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. Yes. Bible again says Cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. Go on. If you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Yes, if you treasure it, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Raising your right hand. Hallelujah. 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 So Bible is asking us to pray for the gift of understanding and insight. So here I will explain what understanding is all about. Understanding is about knowing 
in a deeper way what we believe in faith. So we have been, we have been given the gift of faith and that faith, through, through faith we believe a lot of things. For example, the existence of God, Him being Trinity, Jesus' incarnation and the sin and fall of the humankind and the mystery of salvation, all these things are matter of our faith. Now, by the gift of understanding, what we believe through faith will become clearer. So it's faith seeking understanding. So what we believe in faith will become clear to us, whether it is about the truth about God and eternal salvation, or whether it is about understanding the sacred scriptures, the gift of wisdom, gift of understanding works to give us that clarity of faith. Praise the Lord. Praise so faith and understanding, these are closely related. So the gift of understanding complements the faith and completes the faith. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, um, so we shall now come to this um, Holy Scripture. And we know that our faith teaches a lot of things. So faith comes first. So very often we are not uh, sort of first try to understand everything and then believe. You know, the order is the reverse in our spirituality. We first believe and then we understand. That's how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He gives us the gift of faith. And then with that also comes the gift of understanding. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It was St. Augustine who said, I believe that I may understand. It's not the other way. I understand and I will believe. No. St. Augustine said, you first believe, then you will understand. Praise the Lord. That's what you should be saying to your mind. First believe and then you will understand. What you cannot understand with your human intellect, God will make you understand through the gift of faith. When you receive the Holy Spirit, Faith will explain everything to us. So faith and understanding, they come together, they work together, they complement one another. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, understanding could also be about understanding the word of God. Now, a person without understanding will not know what a particular scripture would mean. What is its context? I'll give you a very um, important, in fact, an interesting example from the Bible. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 4, it's written there. You shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. You shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Praise the Lord. What do you understand from that? What do you understand from that? It is very simple. You shall not muzzle an ox. You know, it's the practice. Sometimes we muzzle um, animals so that they may not bite things. Uh, so we muscle it. But Bible says when an animal is treading out the grain, don't muscle it. Let it eat some things from what it is laboring for. Let it receive something from there. It has a, it has a uh, what do you call, a right to receive something from uh, what it is um, laboring for. So that's a, that's a common um, meaning. But what is, could it have another meaning? Suppose a person, you open the Bible and you see it there. You shall not muscle an ox while it is treading out the grain. You will be lost. 
So why should this be there in the scripture? Although Bible contains a lot of general knowledge as well. But when you have the gift of wisdom, Holy Spirit will give a different meaning. What is the different meaning? So that's why Saint Paul manifested that wisdom. And if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 onwards, you will see a totally different understanding of this text. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Mm -hmm. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Ah, St. Paul says, God is not concerned about the oxen. He is not talking about the oxen, but he is talking about who? Yes, let's read the next. Or does he not speak entirely for our sake? It was indeed written for our sake. For whoever plows should plow in hope, and whoever threshes should thresh in hope of a share in the crop. Okay, go on. If we have sown spiritual good among you, is it too much if we reap your material benefits? Uh -huh. If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we still more? Nevertheless... Okay, that's enough. So, St. Paul was saying to them, is God talking about the oxen? He said, no, he's talking about our human life. For us, he is speaking. And so what is the meaning? The apostle said, if we labored among you, do we not have some right to receive some material benefits from you as apostles? Praise the Lord. So that's the message. So that was the interpretation given. So do not muscle an ox while it is treading the grain. Even if you want a clearer understanding of this, go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, can you go um, verse 17 as well? Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading, treading out the grain, and the laborer deserves to be paid. Okay, the laborer deserves to be paid. So that's what, so let the, uh, let the elders who rule you let them be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muscle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the laborer deserves to be paid. So that's what he was talking to the Christian community to look after the elders, their rulers, their leaders. Um, so this 1 Corinthians 9.9 9 and 1 Timothy 5.18, they all explain that Deuteronomy 25, 4, in a different light. If a person without understanding reads Deuteronomy 25, 4, he would maximum understand this. This is the maximum he can understand. God is talking about an animal, and God is saying that you shall not muscle this ox when it is being used in labor. Praise the Lord. But a person with wisdom, sorry, understanding, he gets it, what God means. In a different situation, he applies it with the wisdom of God. What is the understanding? It's about those who labor in God's work. There must, he shall not muscle them. They deserve to be paid. They deserve to receive benefit from the believers. Praise the Lord. That's a different understanding. Now, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, we have the interesting example of, of an Ethiopian man who went to Jerusalem for prayer. So on the way back, he was reading the scripture. So let's read Acts chapter 8, verse 26 onwards. Acts chapter 8, verse 26 onwards. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. Mm -hmm. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. Yeah. And was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Yeah, this man was reading the prophet Isaiah. Yes. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? Do you understand what you are reading? reading? Obviously, he did not. Praise the Lord. Praise okay, go on. He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. So he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. And? Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Okay, so this man was reading that passage from Isaiah which spoke about somebody. So like a lamb, he was silent and he was humiliated and um, he was being led to the place of slaughter. He did not open his mouth. So all these things were given there. But he wouldn't know who this is all about because there is no wisdom there. What is this all about? Nobody understands. Then the wisdom would explain to him who this is speaking about. And then from what seems to be a meaningless story, he reached his Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise he realized that man who was being led to the slaughter was his Savior. And he stood before a lamb silent for his sake. And he carried that humiliation of his own sins. So wisdom explained what is this all about. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. And then soon he met his Savior and he was baptized. So that understanding was given to this Ethiopian man who went to Jerusalem for that feast. So that's how we understanding works. God is throwing light into our mind and he is enabling us to, he is giving us spiritual senses to know what he has spoken, to understand the meaning of what he has spoken. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So through the Holy Spirit anointing and receiving of the gift of wisdom, and by activating that gift of wisdom, sorry, I always confuse between wisdom and understanding. So by activating that understanding, that gift of understanding, we are able to know more and more what we believe in our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the whole faith becomes meaningful to us, more and more meaningful to us. So the gift of understanding when it comes to our soul, our faith becomes more and more enjoyable and meaningful and we are never lost in believing what we are believing. Praise the Lord. Praise so this is needed in our time. Listen, my brothers and sisters, this gift of understanding we need more and more. Just by journeying through, our, through the sacraments, just by being with the fellow believers, we may not be always enjoying our faith. Just as in Luke chapter 24, Bible says, Luke chapter 24, verse 40, 
4 and 45. After the resurrection, the Lord is speaking to the apostles. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Uh, he had to open their minds to understand the scriptures. Praise the Lord. Yes. Up to then, he didn't know they didn't know, although they had read it over and over, heard it over and over, although they had listened from the very mouth of Jesus about all these things, they didn't have understanding. He opened their minds so to understand. So the gift of understanding works in your mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Raising your right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yesterday we said wisdom is about your intellect. Now the understanding is, is coming to your mind. To your mind, God gives you that deeper awareness of what is spoken and what you have grasped through your intellect. He gives you a deeper um, knowledge of what you have learned, what you have known about God. Praise the, Praise the Lord. He opened. So when we today pray to the Holy Spirit, we are praying for this very gift. Holy Spirit, open my mind that I may understand. Open my mind that I may understand the mysteries of salvation. Whatever I believe, those mysteries of salvation I believe, let me understand it more and more. And let me see that clearly through the gift of understanding. Then we can enjoy our Christian life and discipleship more and more. And I'm sure, my brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit wants to give you that gift of wisdom, that understanding. So ask for it today and receive that enlightenment in your minds. May the Lord do that for us today. So now I ask you to uh, kneel down, pause for a while as we get ready to say the Novena prayer for today. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and in silent moment of prayer, let us pray a moment for the gift of understanding. Let us pray the act of consecration to the Holy Spirit. On my knees before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself, soul and body to you, eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of your purity, the honoring keenness of your justice, and the might of your love. You are the strength and light of my soul. In you I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve you by unfaithfulness to you, to your grace, and I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against you. Mercifully guard my every thought and grant that I may always watch for your light and listen to your voice and follow your gracious inspirations. I cling to you and give myself to you and I ask you by your compassion to watch over me in my weakness, holding the pierced fear of Jesus and looking at his five wounds and trusting in his precious blood and adoring his open side and striking heart. I implore you, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, to keep me in your grace that I may never sin against you. Give me grace, O Holy Spirit, spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to you always and everywhere, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Amen. We shall pray the Novena prayer. 
O Holy Spirit, O my God, I adore Thee and acknowledge here in Thy divine presence that I am nothing and can do nothing without Thee. Come, great Paraclete, Thou Father of the poor, Thou Comforter the best, fulfill the promise of our blessed Saviour, who would not leave us orphans, and come into the mind and the heart of Thy poor, unworthy creature, as Thou didst descend on the sacred day of Pentecost, on the Holy Mother of Jesus, and on His first disciples. Grant that I may participate in these gifts which Thou didst communicate to them so wonderfully, and with so much mercy and generosity. Take from my heart whatever is not pleasing to Thee, and make of it a worthy dwelling place for Thyself. Illumine my mind, that I may see and understand the things that are for my eternal good. Inflame my heart with pure love of Thee, that I may be cleansed from the dross of all inordinate attachments, and that my whole life may be hidden with Jesus in God. Strengthen my will, that I may be made conformable to Thy divine will, and be guided by Thy holy inspirations. Aid me by Thy grace to practice the divine lessons of humility, poverty, obedience, and contempt of the world, which Jesus taught us in his mortal life. O oh, rend the heavens and come down, consoling spirit, that inspired and encouraged by thee, I may faithfully comply with the duties of my state, carry my daily cross most patiently, and endeavor to accomplish the divine will with the utmost perfection. Spirit of love, spirit of purity, Spirit of peace, sanctify my soul more and more, and give me that heavenly peace which the world cannot give. Bless our Holy Father the Pope, bless our church, bless our bishops, our priests, all religious orders, and all the faithful, that they may be filled with the Spirit of Christ and labor earnestly for the spread of his kingdom. O Holy Spirit, thou giver of every good and perfect gift, Grant me, I beseech thee, the intentions of this novena. May thy will be done in me and through me. Mayst thou be praised and glorified forever. Amen. Prayer to receive the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us desire and pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Spirit to finish your work, the souls of your apostles and disciples, Deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of your grace and your love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom that I may despise the perishable things of this world, and aspire only after the things that are eternal, the spirit of understanding to enlighten my mind with the light of your divine truth, the spirit of counsel that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven, the spirit of fortitude that I may bear my cross with you and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. The spirit of knowledge that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints. The spirit of piety that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable and the spirit of fear that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God and may dread in any way to displease him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of your true disciples, and animate me in all things with your spirit. Amen. We shall pray the litany to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Father all-powerful, have mercy on us. Jesus, eternal Son of the Father, have mercy on us. Redeemer of the world, save us. Spirit of the Father and the Son, boundless life of both, sanctify us. Holy Trinity, hear us. Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, enter our hearts. Holy Spirit, who are equal to the Father and the Son, enter our hearts. 
Promise of God the Father. Have mercy on us. Ray of heavenly light. Have mercy on us. Author of all good. Have mercy on us. Source of heavenly water. Have mercy on us. Consuming fire. Have mercy on us. Ardent charity. Have mercy on us. Spiritual unction. Have mercy on us. Spirit of love and truth. Have mercy on us. Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Have mercy on us. Spirit of counsel and fortitude. Have mercy on us. Spirit of knowledge and piety. Have mercy on us. Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Have mercy on us. Spirit of grace and prayer. Have mercy on us. Spirit of peace and meekness. Have mercy on us. Spirit of modesty and innocence. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit the Comforter. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit the Sanctifier. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit who governs the church. Have mercy on us. Gift of God the Most High. Have mercy on us. Spirit who fills the universe. Have mercy on us. Spirit of the adoption of the children of God. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit. Inspire us with horror of sin. Holy Spirit. Come and renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit. Shed your light into our souls. Holy Spirit. Engrave your law in our hearts. Holy Spirit, inflame us with the flame of your love. Holy Spirit, open to us the treasures of your graces. Holy Spirit, teach us to pray well. Holy Spirit, enlighten us with your heavenly inspirations. Holy Spirit, lead us in the way of salvation. Holy Spirit, grant us the only necessary knowledge. Holy Spirit, inspire in us the practice of good. Holy Spirit, grant us the merits of all virtues. Holy Spirit, make us persevere in justice. Holy Spirit, be our everlasting reward. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Send us the Holy Spirit. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Pour down into our souls the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and piety. Come, Come. Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle them the fire of your love. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful Father, that the Divine Spirit may enlighten, inflame, and purify us, that He may penetrate us with His heavenly dew and make us fruitful in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We shall now pray for the gift of understanding. Come, O Spirit of understanding, and enlighten our minds, that we may know and believe all the mysteries of salvation, and may merit at last to see the eternal light in your light, and the light of glory to have a clear vision of you, and the Father and the Son. Amen. These final moments of this novena, let us lift up our hands to the Blessed Sacrament. And we are boldly asking Jesus now, to anoint us with an outpouring anointing of understanding. This very moment, can you lift up your hands and confess to Jesus that you do not know what is understanding. Tell the Lord, just like that Ethiopian cried out, how can I know unless someone tells me? Speak to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, how can I know these mysteries, great mysteries that I believe and profess unless you throw light into my heart, into my mind. Holy Spirit, give me that spiritual vision, understanding, enlighten me. Let your, let your words unscroll before me, Lord, unfold before me. And let it throw heavenly light into my conscience, into my mind now. Whatever I have believed so far become clearer to me without any doubt or doubt. Uh, with the ambiguity, fill me with that clarity, O Holy Spirit. Pray for that grace. With your hands lifted up, pray after me. O precious Holy Spirit. O precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. You are the giver of wisdom. You are the giver of wisdom. And all understanding come from you. And all understanding comes from you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I am your child. I am your child. I'm your servant. I am your servant. I need you. I need you. More than ever. More than ever. In this time. In these times. When the world. When the world. Is trying to fill me with doubt. 
trying to fill me with doubt. Oh Holy Spirit. Oh Holy Spirit. I need your clarity. I need your clarity. I need your light. I need your light. Upon all things that I believe. Upon all things that I believe. My Lord. My Lord. Show mercy to me. Show mercy to me. On my knees I ask you. On my knees I ask you. For the gift of understanding. The gift of understanding. Fan into flame. Fan into flame. The gift of understanding in me. The gift of understanding in me. Holy Spirit. Spirit, Holy Spirit, fan into flame, fan into flame, the gift of understanding, the gift of understanding in me, in me, that I may understand, that I may understand my faith, my faith, better and deeper, better and deeper, I may understand, that I may understand the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures with clarity, with clarity, precious Lord, precious Lord, I offer you my mind, I offer you my mind, and I thank you, and I. Thank Thank you for enlightening me for enlightening me today today keep your hands lifted up and this moment of prayer I'm praying an anointing prayer upon all of you this very moment that the Lord may touch your heart and fill you with grace and mercy and the gift of understanding my precious Savior Jesus I thank you for this time several hands are lifted up to you in prayer Several minds are crying out to you for understanding. Lord, you are the source of all wisdom. Jesus, just as you were so patient with your apostles, and you stood with them, stayed with them, instructed them, you opened their eyes and hearts to receive the word of God. My precious Lord and Savior, this very moment I pray that the same experience happened to your children now on this third day of the novena. Lord, I pray that you stand and sit with everyone participating in this novena and you open the Holy Scripture, open wide it before them, Lord, I pray. And you make their minds illumined that they may understand that from the book of Genesis to Revelation, in each and every book, everywhere, they may see your face. They may see the Savior and encounter him in every book of the Bible. Lord, I pray this understanding may be given to your people by the power of your Holy Spirit now. Lord, I pray now this very moment that all their questions cleared, their faith will shine, Lord, with all purity. Jesus, this very moment I pray that give these children that, that freedom in the Spirit. Lord, let their faith never become a burden to them, too much to digest or understand. By the gift of understanding, Lord, I pray that their faith may become light and a, and a radiant experience for them, a joyful experience for them. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your children all over the world may receive understanding, understanding as the gifts of the Holy Spirit now. Jesus, in your precious name, I thank you for blessing your people with the gift of understanding. Thank you, Lord, for helping your precious children now. Let their hearts and minds rejoice now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My brother and sister, receive that understanding. Keep your hands lifted up to the blessed sacrament now. The Lord Jesus said to his disciples, I'll give you words and wisdom. This very moment, the same God, same Jesus, who opened the eyes of the disciples and apostles, he is blessing you with that power. Look at the blessed sacrament. Keep singing, precious spirit, come. This very moment, receive that anointing from the Holy Eucharist. The gift of understanding is being poured out upon you.
precious spirit come holy spirit come come into me now to touch and heal precious spirit come holy spirit come come in now and set my life on fire thank you lord this moment through this blessing of the blessed sacrament may the spirit of understanding fall upon the people of god their struggles in faith miraculously be healed tonight several souls be set free jesus my lord as you are opening their eyes now this very moment this very moment may the joy of believing in you understanding the depth of your love fill every heart in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving yes, we worship you o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy we understand that there has been some disturbances in the live broadcast um we hopefully if the video is incomplete we'll try to upload it tonight so that you can um get it in its entirety so be patient with that and um uh, if you haven't received the full broadcast uh, just watch for it tonight and we will re-upload it for you to have a um, complete look of it so thank you for joining tonight and we'll come back tomorrow again um 7:30 with the novena to the holy spirit day 4